Hi, this is Tom from zerdefinals.com. I wanted to do a video about GnRH analogs and how we use them to shut down the production of the male and female sex hormones in order to treat conditions like prostate cancer and endometriosis. These GnRH analogs are effective in treating these conditions because they rely in some way on the sex hormone to develop and produce their symptoms. Firstly, I give you a couple of examples of these GnRH analogs. The first one being Guzarelin, which is under the brand name of Zolidex, and the other one is Luprorelin, which is under the brand name of Prostab. To understand how these medications work, you need to have a basic understanding of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis in the male and female bodies. So here we have a basic diagram showing the hypothalamus, the anterior pituitary gland, and then the gonads, in this case the ovaries. The hypothalamus produces gonadotrophin-releasing hormone, or GnRH, and the GnRH stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to produce LH and FSH. LH and FSH then stimulate the development of the follicles in the ovaries, and the follicles themselves in the ovaries release estrogen and then oestrogen goes on to have a negative feedback effect on the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. The system is very similar in males, except that LH stimulates the testicles to produce testosterone, and this testosterone goes on to have a negative feedback effect on the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland. So now let's look at how the GnRH analogues work. These medications are agonists of the receptors of GnRH on the anterior pituitary gland. So the anterior pituitary gland has receptors that sit and wait for GnRH hormones to come along and stimulate them, and it's them that trigger the release of the LH and FSH, or the gonadotrophins. And these receptors on the anterior pituitary gland are the target for these GnRH agonists. So these agonists act exactly like the GnRH hormone and target these receptors and stimulate them to produce LH and FSH. The medications cause a very powerful stimulation of these receptors, though more powerful than natural, and cause a large release of the LH and FSH. This causes an initial flare of the sex hormones that causes a rise in estrogen and testosterone. This can last a few days to a few weeks and they can have side effects such as temporarily worsening the symptoms of prostate cancer, such as growth of the tumour or the metastases, for example causing urinary retention or spinal cord compression. The injections are given as a subcutaneous or intramuscular injection, and that slowly releases the hormone into the body over a period of time, and this could be between a month or three months depending on the dose. These GnRH analogues are also good at sticking to the receptors for some time and causing continuous stimulation. After continuous stimulation of the GnRH receptors, these receptors on the anterior pituitary gland become desensitized to the GnRH hormone. So over time, the pituitary shuts down its production of LH and FSH because it's become so desensitized to the effects of the hormone that it no longer responds at all. This leads to a reduction in the production of estrogen or testosterone, and so you get something called a hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. So this is low gonadotrophins, LH and FSH, causing a low output of the hormones from the gonads. Over time, the GnRH analogues will wear off, and in the absence of this continuous stimulation, the pituitary gland will start to become more sensitized to GnRH again, and the whole system will come back online. Therefore, the dose needs to be repeated to maintain these effects. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to in preparation for your exams. 
There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.